This is Mitch, and welcome to the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. I'm here with Kathy Kennebrook, and we're going to be talking about how you can find your path to prosperity by buying and selling land. Um, you know, anywhere from the regular residential postage stamp lot all the way up to the big ranch, split it up, subdivide it, and owner finance it, or just flip it. You know what I mean? So, but before we get started, I need to pay homage uh, to my sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com. Please check it out. There's over 37 video vignettes over there. So just give us a little bit of your micro information. We promise not to beat you up with an endless stream of BS. Just want to uh, show you these videos. You have no idea what your financial advisor is not telling you, and we're going to tell you what they're not telling you and why they're not telling you. That's TaxFreeFuture.com. All right, Kathy, how you doing? Good. How are you, Mitch? Where are you sitting physically right now? I am physically sitting in my office in Bradenton, Florida, where it's nice and sunny and warm. <laughs> Bradenton, Florida. Good for you. So um, you, you did a lot of things before you got to this point. Tell us what led up to being in real estate. Okay. Well, I spent about 20 years in the financial sector. Um, I worked in ba the banking industry and then I worked in the barter industry for a bunch of years. And then I decided that I really hated corporate America. And so I was looking to find something better to do um, that would be more self-employed. And um, that's how we kind of got into real estate investing. I actually got into it from one of those <clears throat> late night infomercials. Um, on how to buy houses with no money down. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if that really worked? And so we went to some seminars and we went to uh, some real estate club meetings and the rest is kind of history. Um, started out doing uh, uh, single family homes, mobile homes, uh, urban commercial, and then moved into the vacant land segment, which we really, really like. So I'm just curious, who was that late night infomercial? Oh gosh, it's been over 20 years ago. I don't even remember now to be truthful with you. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I had the same experience 24 years ago. Um, you know, I bought Carlton Sheets and Dave Del Dotto and so a lot of names that people won't even recognize anymore. Jimmy right. Napier, you know, there was a guy named Miller. Uh, I don't know, there was a whole bunch of people. They were, they were ahead of their time and there wasn't a lot of internet stuff. So, you know, it was a lot different. We, we were buying our cassettes, right? We were putting yes, our cassettes exactly. Paper. Yeah. Actually, one of my very early mentors was Richard Powelson. And that's going way, way, way back. So yeah, that was on stone tablets, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to be giving away your ebook, Real Estate Principles. Uh, and that's your personal path to prosperity. But what we really want to talk about today is about how the buy and sell program looks or the strategy looks when, as it applies to just land. So Correct. where do we start with this topic? Well, I got it. Like I said, I got into the vacant land industry about, oh gosh, oh, 10 or 15 years ago now. We had just bought um, a vacation home and the whole point was to go up, close the gates and chill. But you know as well as I do that real estate investing is sort of an addiction. <laughs> and there was just all this vacant land and it was all screaming, buy me, buy me, buy me. And so that's kind of how we got into it. And so I do a lot of uh, direct mail marketing. And then we also buy some vacant land from tax certificates and tax deed sales. So we do a little bit of all of it. And, and I got to tell you, in our current marketplace, this is a very, very motivated seller at this point. A lot of these folks have inherited the land or they intended to do something with it and now they're not going to. Maybe they were going to build a home or, or do farming or raise animals or whatever that was going to be. And now that situation has changed for them. And these are some of the most highly motivated sellers that we have ever dealt with. Um, one of our most recent pieces of direct mail that we did, we mailed out 147 pieces we got 19 responses and we bought nine of those. So these are some really super, super motivated sellers to be working with and very profitable. <laughs> so give us an example of one of your better deals. Okay, so, oh, there's so many. Um, and one of the things that I also do um, 
it, that I do that's very different from anybody else that's doing vacant land deals in the market or, or teaching that is not only do we buy and sell, but we also buy and lease vacant land. So about 75% of the land I buy, I lease. And so we're working with a lot of different companies and we're doing a lot of lease scenarios. But on a buy and flip, one of my favorite ones was a two acre piece that we bought. It was an estate. Um, we, bought the, we bought the piece of land for $4,000. It was four half acre pieces that were attached. Um, it was fenced. It had a well, it had septic, it had a power pole, and it had two concrete pads. We sold that for $25,000 about six or eight weeks after we bought that piece of land. So that was one of my favorites. <laughs> well, so this is a way for maybe someone with just a little bit of money to get started and kind of be a high roller. You know, you, know, you, can, you can buy $4,000 piece, $4, pieces yeah. of land with your credit card. So even if you don't have money, you can go get a cash advance on your cards. I mean, it's just a smaller bite-sized business, right? Where you exactly. can really make a lot of money. Your R I find your ROIs are always really, really, really higher the smaller right. the numbers get. But there's a lot of work. You right. know, it takes four deals to do 100,000. You know what I mean? So in this case, so 25, 25, 25, 25, or just do $100,000 deal. But a person might not be able to afford to get into a $100,000 deal, you know? Exactly. And, and the leases, the leases are really fun because um, I do leasing and I do owner financing. And so those are fun because what happens is generally when you lease, again, remember, you're buying these pieces of land for pennies on the dollar. Okay. So when you lease or you owner finance a piece of vacant land, you're getting all of the money back that you paid for that piece of land basically on the upfront. So the rest is just gravy. So I have a, a piece of vacant land, smaller deal again, acre and a quarter. I bought it for a thousand dollars. I owner financed that piece of land. Um, my buyer gave me $2,500 down. We sold the piece of property for $11,000 and her payment to me is $300 a month, which goes straight. It's all profit. Um, and same thing. And, and think about it. You've got no insurance, you know, no, no toilets, no broken water heaters, no this, no that. You're just, you know, oh, hurricane came through. Oh, darn, we lost another tree. So you don't have all the hassles that you do with apartments or single family homes and all that kind of stuff. Although I do all of that, but it's kind of, a you know, well, people say you can't you can't mess up a piece of land, but that's not true because I've had people do it. But but for the most part, you know, the problem a lot of times is just trash, tires, people dumping on you. Um, you know, I had one time where someone cut down all the trees, which was completely asinine. Right. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's a lot easier to tear up a house than it is to tear up a piece of land. I can tell you that. Exactly. I once bought a I once bought a 12 acres from somebody and I had to buy it so fast that I didn't have time to look at it. Upon closer inspection, I found out that they had been dumping tires on this land for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, there was thousands of tires. Uh, and, you know, of course that was against the EPA or whatever the powers that be. And I, I immediately called to see if there was anything in those funds to help me get rid of those tires. You know, they have a fund. And of course there wasn't any money in it, in that fund. And so I, I nicknamed it my rubber plantation. And you know what I did? I went and th tried to figure out what can you do with these tires? Cause these tires are valuable to somebody. Correct. And I didn't find anyone close enough to come get them at the time. Or I just ran off on this idea without pursuing who really needed tires. But um, I found a way that they stack these tires and how they build building walls out of tires, you know, so you can put a roof over the top of it. Yep. And I, I, I did two walls to show the person that was coming out there how it would work. I did it in an L. And then I said, and there's more than enough tires out here to, to, to build, you know, a 24,000 square foot riding arena, <laughs> you know? And uh, they yeah. fell in love with it and they bought it because of the tires. Yep. Oh yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. One of the other things that I found while we're talking about things that you can do to vacant land 
we quite often will find deals that have like a nasty house on it or a mobile home that's fallen apart or, you know, sheds that are like falling in on themselves and things like that. And one of the techniques that I actually talk about in my system that we do regularly are these practice burns. So you call the fire department and you have them come out and do a practice burn. Now you've gotten rid of your problem. You've done a public service and you just got a write off. So that's wow. something else that we do um, a lot. And so it's completely changed the way that I look at land because what for the seller is a big problem is nothing for me. Right. Str strike a match to it. I like it. Exactly. Um, so when you say you're leasing this land, are you usually leasing this land to people with mobile homes? Uh, that's okay. So that's one thing that we do. Um, I could sit here all day and, t and tell you about leasing vacant land. That's like a whole seminar. Um, okay. So one of the things that we do is we talk to the neighbors because a lot of times they want to lease some additional vacant land for something that we're doing. So for example, one of one of the things that I did, I bought a piece of vacant land, I talked to a neighbor, and the neighbor has a business where he raises agricultural worms, and he needed to expand his business. So he ended up ex releasing our piece of vacant land, and he's using that land to raise agricultural worms. And the way that they do that is with tanks and tubes. So there's a big tank and a tube and another tank and a tube. And so he needed more space for that. We lease to billboard companies. That's pretty awesome. We lease for pasture land. Um, we lease for storage, various types of storage, whether somebody's got like a, um, you know, like an RV that they want to put on there or, um, you know, cars, um, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing, or even landscape companies. They will lease our land to have a place to store extra rock and, um, you know, and bricks and, and things like that that they use in their landscape business. Um, so there's all kinds of really great ways to, to lease vacant land. I actually, my, one of my favorite um, pieces of vacant land, we also lease to nurseries. Um, that's one of my favorite ones because I get free plants now. <laughs> but, all right. But it's all potted plants, and I, like they like they have greenhouses on the land and potted plants, that sort of thing. And then one of my other favorite leases, um, I lease to a gentleman. I've got a really nice piece of land, small piece. It's two hundred. It's a hundred by two hundred, small lot, very small lot. Bought it really cheap. I lease it for four hundred dollars a month, and it's about a half a block from one of the major boat ramps in the area, and I. Um, leased it to a gentleman um, who leases it, who uh, rents kayaks. Um, he's got an outpost. So he put a shed on that property to store his extra kayaks, canoes, life jackets, and things like that. Um, so all he did was put a building on there and he's paying me 400 bucks a month. And again, all profit, 100% profit. Yeah, and that doesn't go away and should increase over the years, right? So that's exactly. what's great about leasing it. The problem with selling house, selling property, uh, seller finance is that eventually it runs out. You know, the, the, you know when you sell something on a note, it's I temporary. Know. Then you just got to um, go find some more. <laughs> you know, you can actually build your own, um, your own mobile home park one lot at a time if you just bought the lots and then leased it to the storage to the I mean to the mobile home owner who needed a place to put his mobile home I do find that mobile home sales lots are a tremendous avenue for moving your lots if you want to rent them or sell them or sell or finance them anyway because those people they can sell all the homes they want to but until they have a place to go drop it you know to drop it off that salesperson's not getting their commission and the and the sales manager is not getting credit for the sale until they drag that thing off. So um, they will sell your property for you for free. In my experience, I've always, when I had a place that was allowed to put mobile homes on it, it never took very long because I have this long list of mobile home sales uh, places. And I just faxed to all of them. I have a lot for sale. You know, these are the terms I want. So the way, okay. So the way that I do that, and that's, you just took one of my favorite, favorite ways to sell vacant land. Okay, so we have relationships with, with specific mobile home sellers in the area where our land is. Now, where I'm working vacant land is very rural. So we're about 85% mobile home, 15% stick built. 
and my home is a log home. So we had to jump in there and do, and we built it. So we had to jump in there and do something like totally different. Yeah. But um, what I did, so what I do is as I buy pieces of vacant land, I add those to a list that I provide to the mobile home dealers constantly. They package my land in with their house. And then when the bank financing comes through for the buyer, I get paid for my land um, at the same time that the buyer pays for the whole or the bank finances the whole property for that buyer. And so we provide a list of land to uh, two different mobile home developers that are directly in our area. And we do a ton that way. You're absolutely right. That's the easiest, best, quickest way to, to flip vacant land. Well, well, my point when I started out on the topic is, you know, I, it dawns on me that you can have your own mobile home park. Just oh, absolutely. The lots won't be contiguous. But the problem when you buy a whole park where the lots are contiguous, I mean, you have to write a check for two or three or four million dollars or you have to find the funds. You can build your own mobile home park on paper, really, by just buying a lot over here and a lot over there and a lot Absolutely. over there and just rent them out. Get them, you know, make sure they have a septic and electric and, and a, you know, and then rent wow. them out. And, and it's a way to build a park one lot at a time. Absolutely. A lot more feasible for people, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. There, there are so many opportunities, and and I've done a couple of big deals. We did, we did. Um, I've got, I've got a piece that's 160 acres, and it's a, it's a hunting, um, hunting, a hunting camp. And then the pieces are leased out during certain parts of the year for certain types of hunting, et cetera, et cetera. So we do that. But I really like the smaller stuff that we do really consistently. And it's real easy because it keeps falling into my lap, <laughs> and it's very, very inexpensive because the sellers are very, very motivated. Yes, and there's always the people that are always contiguous with the land that you bought or, or, or touching that land, and they're, they're always your prime suspects, right? Because that's where the land is the most valuable is to those neighbors. Yeah, and the, uh, the other thing that's interesting, Mitch, with the direct mail campaigns that I do to find uh, the owners of the vacant land, men, probably 50% of the cases, we will get um, a seller uh, who will contact us and say, well, I inherited this land. I've never seen it. I've never been there. Um, you know, just go and make an offer on it. Yeah. Uh, so what does your piece look like? Say again. What does your mailing piece look like? Oh, there you go. Okay, you were missing for a minute. It, this, uh, this screen blipped out. Okay, well, um, so what I basically do is it's a personalized letter that goes to my seller. Um, and it, what I have in my letters, which is different than a lot of people do, is a response mechanism. And in the response mechanism, I tell the seller exactly what it is I want them to do and what information I need to have in order to make a deal for them. And so when that response hits my desk, the response is already pre-screened. So I've got all the information basically that I need about that property. And it's really funny because one of the questions I ask is like, where is it? Because a lot of the times vacant land doesn't have an address. And so they'll say, you know, well, it's down this road and it's next to that tree. And then you make a right at the rock and things like that. So, um, and then one of, one of the things, and so that's, so we tell them what we need to know in order to make an offer on a piece of land. And one of the things that I do also cover in my system is how to physically find a piece of land. Yeah, sometimes it's hard, right? Yeah, because they don't have, a lot of them don't have addresses. Yeah. It doesn't have an address unless there's already, you know, if there's been a mobile home on it before or something like that, it will have a physical address. But if that property has not been used for anything before, it won't have a physical address. And so you have to use other ways to find that piece of vacant land. So, um, Well, I want everyone to go by and get a copy of your ebook, Real Estate Principles, Your Personal Path to Prosperity. And um, check it out. You go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash land girl, all one word, land girl. And you'll get into the show notes over there and you'll be able to get and download the free uh, ebook, Real Estate Principles, Your Personal Path to Prosperity. And um, man, it, what would you say to people that were just starting out? Because I think this is a great, I think this is a great avenue for the beginner. Um, it's bite-sized. It's not so much money. These, these land pieces are not so much money. Also, you know, our, our, our sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com, has to deal with tax-free and tax-deferred retirement uh, plans. And for people that don't have a lot of money in their retirement plan, 
these lots and these little these little deals are a great way to exponentially explode your 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 balance in those in those um, in those accounts. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get wealthy, which is God bless America, right? But oh, absolutely, but not all of them are affordable, or, or 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 the average person can wrap their arms around. You know, this is this is a huggable strategy. You know, it's you can get your arms around it. Oh, absolutely. One of the things uh, that we've done is we have built our Roth IRAs and we've done some inside our 401k. Um, and so that's a really easy, quick way to build the balances in those accounts. So you're absolutely right. So there's lots of ways. Like you said, you can put it on a credit card. You can take it out of your own money. You can take it out of your Roth IRA. You can take it out of your 401k. You can use private lenders for vacant land. Um, some of the, if you're breaking in a new private lender, a couple of small deals like that is just perfect. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I've bought land in my early days and the people selling the land owned businesses and their businesses took credit cards and they would just charge my card and add the 2.7% or whatever the fee was on top of it. And I was more than happy to pay the credit card fee because I, I didn't have any money and I was going to make a whole lot of money on this. I mean, I was going to double my money on this property and it wasn't even my money. I was using the credit card company's money. So I had like a nothing down deal because I'd buy it on my credit card. Yes. And then when it sold, I got paid real cash and, exactly. and I made good money. So um, exactly. what, what do you say to the newbies out there? What do I think of? What do you say to the newbies that are out there? Oh, the newbies. Oh, absolutely. This is a really good way for a newbie to get started or for a semi-seasoned investor to add another leg to their business. Um, I'm all about doing multiple streams of income and vacant land is one of the multiple streams of income that I like to do. Go ahead and get started. Make sure that you follow through, get your direct mail campaigns out there, find your sellers, do some deals, um, you know, and, and start making some money. And, and the interesting thing, you know, everybody in our current market is is worried about where they're you know if if their rents are going to get paid on their rental properties and, and i have a lot of single family homes that i have rented also but the ones for my vacant land are coming from you know businesses for the most part and so i'm not and and i have nothing i have no mortgages they're all free and clear all of my vacant land is free and clear so that's just extra money that's coming in to us every month and in other areas in larger areas um then you can can, uh, you can do, um, you know, wind turbines, solar panels. I mean, there are so many different ways to, to, to lease vacant land, um, you know, or buy and sell vacant land that it's, it's just a real easy business to get into if you follow certain steps and you do your due diligence. Absolutely. All right, you guys, we've been talking to Kathy Kennebrook. I want to thank all y'all for stopping by to get you your ebook called Real Estate Principles, Your Personal Path to Prosperity. And you just go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash land girl. And Kathy, I'd like to really thank you for being on. And if you guys are interested in this kind of thing, she's got a course she's teaching over there. You also see that over in the show notes. Just go to that same link. And, you know, there'll be contact information over there. You can, if you want to learn more from Kathy about exactly what's going on with her course and what it, uh, what all it offers. Just go to reinvestorsummit.com forward slash land girl. And there'll be um, plenty of, plenty of information over there. So I appreciate you all. And I'd like to thank taxfreefuture.com. Uh, you won't believe what your financial advisors aren't telling you. And we're going to tell you what they're not telling you. And we're going to tell you why. And then you can do with it whatever you want to. But I do think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised. So Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Mitch. And I really enjoyed uh, doing the podcast with you today. And thank you for everybody who's coming in and listening to us. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye now. Bye-bye.